Did you know that either Pomni or Kinger will be abstracted in Episode 2, or one of them will start going insane, which will eventually lead to abstraction after all? Or why was this item shown as a new character, but will actually do some pretty creepy things to the characters? Also, why weren't we shown the remaining characters in the trailer? Gangle, Zubal, and Ragatha. All of these things will be involved in the new second episode of The Amazing Digital Circus. And trust me, Glitch hid quite a bit from us in their episode 2 trailer. Also, somewhere in the video, I hid one of the toys that Glitch introduced to us. And anyone who finds it will get an interesting fact about the second episode of The Amazing Digital Circus. So, how can the second episode have anything to do with depression when the trailer showed us such a colorful Candy Canyon? I think it's all about the new location and the new characters that could cause problems. And one of them is that Kinger might go crazy and abstract soon, but not because he wants to do it himself, but maybe because Kane and also the game developers want to get rid of him. This thought was brought to my mind by something I talked about in my last video, namely, when Kinger beats up Pomni with a shotgun. It is in this particular scene that something is hidden in the corner. And if we lighten the picture, we can see a silhouette that looks a lot like Pomni. Thanks to your comments, I have some really interesting theories about this, and the first one is that Kinger really starts to go crazy before abstracting. As we know from Kaufmo's example, characters start doing weird things before they abstract. Kaufmo kept talking about coming out. What if the first hint about Kinger is precisely that he starts beating Pomni with a shotgun? He may well think that Pomni, who just arrived at the digital circus and keeps talking about the exit, knows something about the exit. Thus, he's trying to find out information about it from her morals notwithstanding. And Kinger may well have come to be infuriated by this, which is why he does it so brutally, and he picked a pretty good location to do it. I think this location has to do with the new ghost-like characters, and the location itself is like some kind of horrifying mansion, because everything here is pretty old, and if we look at the room that Kinger and Pomni are in, it's very small and looks like a restroom. It's very likely that it could be behind one of these doors, because first of all, Kinger and Pomni are standing near the door. And secondly, we see this green light that looks like one of the new characters. And ghosts can light up a room without even being an it. That's why we have such poor lighting in this room. I think this room is very small, so any of the ghosts wouldn't fit in here. However, on the other hand, Kinger may not be going crazy of his own accord. And here I am, referring to this strange object that we are introduced to as a new character. It is likely that this box makes strange noises, or even has a voice of its own. Or maybe there is some character in there that needs to be released from there. And I believe that this box can manipulate the characters, making them do very strange and dangerous things. That's why this item could have affected Kinger, and he started going crazy. But where did the shotgun come from? Since this house looks quite old, Kinger could have found it by accident, or he could have been given the information just by this box. But also don't forget about the ghosts that also belong to this location. They both look like not very friendly characters, so they could be playing against the main characters. As Kane stated in the first episode, he can't affect the characters directly, but he can create situations or environments that will change the main character's mind. Thus, the box could tell Kinger that it hides a plan to escape from the digital circus or some other information that Kinger needs. But in order to get it, he will have to fulfill a special task, and it could be to cripple or eliminate any character from those we have. Jax cannot be taken here because he thinks only about himself and would not agree to help Kinger in any way. Pomni, on the other hand, is pretty gullible and she means well, so she could agree. But you might ask, what's the purpose of taking out any character? I mean, Kane doesn't seem to wish for evil, but I still think he is one of the main villains of the circus, so it might be important to him. But on the other hand, we haven't seen Kane in the new Candy Canyon location, and I have this theory that he basically won't show up at this location. Candy Canyon could be run by the new characters introduced in the trailer. And at the very least, Jelly Dinosaur could be the sheriff of this candy town, and he is keeping order here. But why can't Jax come to Pomni's aid in this situation? First of all, it's obvious that he's not worried about anyone. Second, I think he may be in another location at this time, namely the fast food place. And as we know from the first episode, characters can split up into different groups for different missions, which is why Jax went on some other mission and Kinger and Pomni went to that mansion. But then where are the other characters? Maybe they stayed in the main building of the Digital Circus and just didn't go to Candy Canyon. Or maybe Kane only had a mission in mind for Kinger, Pomni, and Jax. But if we take a closer look at the very carriage that the Jelly Elephant is driving, there are seats for exactly six characters, but only three are occupied. This could mean that the assignment from Conte will involve the others after all. It's as if not all the characters went to the Candy Canyon, 
but all six characters will have to go back to the circus. Maybe this is Kane's prank, and he's the one who came up with this assignment, where Kinger, Pomni, and Jax have to get Ragatha, Zubal, and Gangle out of the Candy Canyon because Kane put them there. Or, I have another interesting theory, which is that the Candy Canyon characters kidnapped Zubal, Gangle, and Ragatha from the Digital Circus. We don't know if the Digital Circus and Candy Canyon are next to each other, nor do we know what the connection is between the two, or if Candy Canyon can be accessed by the normal route. Either Kaney teleports all the characters to a new location. But then again, we know that Kane co-created both the Digital Circus and Candy Canyon and hasn't even finished it yet. And also all the characters were created by Kane too, except that the Digital Circus had some sort of glitch. So even if Ragatha, Zubal, and Gang were kidnapped, it's all Kane's fault. Oh, and I don't think Glitch will somehow selectively link different episodes to any particular characters because that wouldn't be fair to the audience. We all have our favorite character, which means that Glitch will have to introduce us to all the characters in each episode anyway. But what about the main plot of the second episode? Because as Gooseworks tweeted to us, it will be related to depression. How can such a colorful candy location be related to this condition? I have a theory that either Glitch did a diversion and presented us the Candy Canyon in the trailer for the sake of the trailer and actually the second episode will unfold in other locations, or it will have something to do with Gangla, Zubla, and Ragatha because they disappeared somewhere in the trailer. And we don't know how long these characters have been in Candy Canyon, unless of course the second episode has something to do with that. So anything could happen to them. So some of these characters could just get depressed, and some of them could start to go crazy, like if you take that item from the mansion, and maybe some of them could become abstracted but I think that's unlikely. Even though the second episode will focus on depression, I don't think Glitch will remove any of the characters on this occasion. After all, it's a state you can both fall into and come out of. What are your thoughts on this unusual item in the haunted house? Also, what theories do you have about the plot of episode two? Be sure to post your theories in the comments because I'm reading every one of them and maybe it's your theory that I'll tackle in the next video. Also, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Good luck to everyone and bye-bye.